Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar titled Lithium Ion Battery Separator Pore Structure Determination Using Mercury Intrusion Pore Symmetry. My name is Jeff Kenvin, and I'm the Vice President of Science at Micromertix Instrument Corporation. Before we begin, we want to cover a few housekeeping items. At the bottom of your screen are multiple engagement tools you can use. You may expand your slide area or maximize it to full screen by clicking on the arrows in the top right corner. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can submit them through the Q&A. We'll try to answer the, these during the webcast, but if we run out of time, we'll be answered later via email. Additional materials are available in the resource list. We encourage you to download any resources or links that you may find useful. Some networks cause slides to advance more slowly than others, so logging off your VPN is recommended. If your slides are behind, pushing F5 on your keyboard will refresh the page. If you experience any problems during the session, you can find answers to some common technical issues located in the Help Engagement tool at the bottom of your screen. An on-demand version of the webcast will be available after today's webcast and will be emailed to you once the session has concluded. I'm pleased to introduce our speaker for this webinar, Tony Thornton. Tony has more than 40 years of experience with micromertics and in the field of material characterization. His expertise includes techniques for particle size, pore symmetry, physisorption, chemisorption, and pycnometry, and has contributed to the development of all of these techniques here at micromertics. Tony received both undergraduate and graduate degrees from Emory University. He is a fellow of ASTM and recently honored with the ASTM Kavanaugh Award for his outstanding leadership and contributions to the promotion of international standards development. Tony, it is an honor for me to introduce you today. We are so glad you could be here today to share your insights on lithium ion battery separator, pore structure determination using mercury intrusion pore symmetry. Thank you, Jeff, for that nice introduction. Today we will discuss the determination of pore volume distribution, porosity, permeability, and tortuosity of lithium ion battery separators. Lithium ion batteries are an advanced energy storage technology that plays a key role in the trend toward renewable and sustainable industrial solutions involving electrification. They have a high energy density, high power density, and long cycle life. This has driven the adoption of lithium ion batteries. Separators are an important component of a lithium ion battery. They mechanically separate the anode and cathode while allowing maximum ionic conductivity of the lithium ion containing electrolyte. Its design and performance directly affect the capacity, cycle life, and safety performance of the battery. The Autopore 5 uses mercury pore symmetry that can be used for characterization of lithium ion battery separators and electrodes. This uniquely valuable technique delivers speed, accuracy, and characterization of properties critical to safety, energy density, and longer cycle life of the lithium ion battery. Mercury intrusion pore symmetry results of analyses of three commercial separators will be discussed in terms of pore volume distribution, porosity, permeability, and pore tortuosity. Today we will look at separator porosity in terms of the pore volume as a function of the diameter of pore accesses. Pressure is applied to the mercury to force it into the accessible pore spaces through the openings to those pores. This contrasts to porometry where the size of the narrowest opening in through pores is determined. With mercury intrusion pore symmetry, all open pores, both blind or dead end pores and through pores are characterized. Using the bulk density of the separator and the total pore volume determined, the percent open porosity of the separator can be calculated. Both the median diameter, that which corresponds to one half of the cumulative pore volume, and the modal diameter, that through which the most pore volume fills, are determined from the pore volume distribution. The total analysis does include filling in between layers of the folded separator, necessary to have enough sample under test, as well as compression of the separator media at very high applied pressures. These effects, which look like but are not actually the filling of pores, can be easily recognized and removed from the analysis results. In addition to pore volume and porosity, the pore structure can be characterized using the method of Katz and Thompson to determine permeability based upon the breakthrough pressure 
in the first primary intrusion of mercury into the pore structure. Similarly, the tortuosity and tortuosity factor can be determined. Mercury intrusion pore symmetry is based upon the work that is required to force a non-wetting liquid into open pores. Both dead end or blind pores and through pores are characterized with the volume of the pore filling through the opening to the pore recorded along with the pressure at which the pore fills. The work is necessary to extend the surface area of the mercury down into the pore against the surface tension of the liquid mercury. Since larger pores have less surface area as a function of their volume, it is easier to force mercury into larger pores at lower pressures than into smaller pores which require higher pressures. The intrusion volume is determined electrically using capacitance. Only a few physical constants are needed and these are readily available. Here we see a mercury droplet sitting over the opening to a capillary pore. Notice that the droplet does flatten somewhat due to the effects of gravity but not enough to enter the pore space. Work in the form of applied pressure will be needed to fill the pore with mercury. Notice the definition of contact angle between the mercury and the surface. This is at the advancing edge of the droplet over the sample surface. The diameter of the pore being filled can be calculated from the Washburn equation where the equilibrium applied pressure, P, is used with the surface tension of the mercury, sigma, and the contact angle between the sample and the mercury, theta, along with the conversion constant to keep the unit straight to calculate the pore diameter. A change in capacitance as the mercury intrudes into the pores is recorded. Using a constant based upon the internal and external diameters of the penetrometer capillary stem, the capacitance change is converted into the volume of mercury intruding into the sample. This intrusion volume, recorded along with the applied pressure at which it occurs, form the basis of the cumulative intrusion volume as a function of pore opening diameter. The bulk density of the sample under tests can be determined at the initial pressure at which the penetrometer is first filled with mercury, surrounding the sample but not yet intruding into pores. At the completion of intrusion at maximum pressure, the apparent skeletal density can be determined. This is similar to that determined from gas displacement pycnometry, assuming that there are not pores too small to fill using mercury intrusion pore symmetry and that the material does not compress at the higher applied pressures. The porosity is defined as the ratio of the pore volume to the total sample volume, that is the sample plus its pores. It is necessary to know the volume of mercury that the penetrometer holds when empty, along with the volume of mercury loaded into the penetrometer at the beginning of the sample analysis in order to determine the bulk sample volume. This volume of mercury loaded during the analysis can be determined from the mass of mercury loaded and the density of mercury. At the start of the analysis, the penetrometer is evacuated to remove air and other vapors and then filled with mercury at low absolute pressure. So as to only fill the penetrometer with mercury and not yet fill any of the open porosity of the sample under test. Once the maximum pressure is reached, the sample is fully intruded with mercury and the apparent skeletal density is calculated. Three cell guard battery separator sheets were purchased from their website. One was a mono layer separator and the other two were tri-layer. These are thin stretch polymeric sheets. For these analyses, from 0.08 to 0.12 grams of the sheet was cut as a single strip and accordion folded to fit within the sample holder. Proper operation of the autopore that was used for these analyses was verified using a reference sample. No sample pretreatment was performed and typical analysis conditions shown here were followed to determine the pore size distribution and pore structure parameters. The cumulative intrusion volume, or pore volume, of the 2500 monolayer separator as a function of pore size is shown in red in this graph. Overlaid in green is the log differential intrusion, the change in intrusion volume divided by the change in log of diameter for the applied pressure increment. Since the x-axis of the cumulative graph is on a logarithmic scale, the green log differential is the first derivative of the red cumulative curve. This shows the position of modes in the pore volume distribution along with the shape of the pore distribution, narrow or broad, Gaussian or skewed. Here we see three modes, one not quite complete on the left at high pore diameters, one nice and tall, though skewed towards smaller pore sizes, along with a few shoulders, and a final small one at the smallest diameters. 
Now it happens that the large size mode is not due to filling of pores, but rather due to filling in between the folded layers of the separator test sample. Also, that small mode at the highest pressures is due to compression of the separator media after the open porosity is filled. Neither of these is due to the filling of pores and their effects can be removed. The remaining pore volume distribution for this monolayer separator is shown in this graph. The software of the AutoPore includes features that allows for the easy removal of interstitial and compression effects, leaving for this separator a monomodal pore distribution skewed towards smaller pore opening sizes with some small shoulders on that small diameter side of the primary mode. This graph includes the cumulative pore volume distribution in red and log differential distribution in green for the H2512 trilayer separator. Again, the modes to the left are due to interstitial filling and the small one to the right is due to compression. And again, we can use the features of the AutoPore software to remove these effects. In this edited graph, we see that this separator has a primary mode in the distribution and again, some skewed toward the small diameter side of the distribution, but also shows a second mode on that skewed side. Note this is a trilayer separator, not a monolayer when like the last sample. Here we see the full results for the other trilayer separator, again with both interstitial filling and compression effects seen. And now we see the edited results where those effects have been removed. As with the other two samples, the distribution is skewed to the small diameter side of the primary mode and some shoulders are present. To compare the pore volume distribution of the three separators analyzed, we overlay the cumulative pore volume distributions. The monolayer separator, shown in red, is found to have larger pores than the trilayer separators, shown in green and blue. The monolayer separator and the H12 trilayer separator have similar total pore volumes greater than that of the H1612 separator, though all three separators have different pore sizes. That is readily seen when we overlay the log differential intrusions in this graph. The pores in the monolayer separator are the largest and it has the simplest distribution in that there are not well-defined additional modes after the primary one. The pore volume distribution for the two trilayer separators definitely show more detail on the skewed smaller diameter side of the distribution with the H16 separator showing the smallest pore opening diameters. This table summarizes some of the parameters determined from the pore volume distributions for the three separators. Note that interstitial filling and compression effects have been removed. From these data, we see that the 2500 monolayer and the H2512 trilayer separators have similar total pore volumes, but slightly different porosities. Remember that the bulk density is used when calculating the porosity and there is a small difference in bulk densities enough so that the monolayer sample shows a higher porosity, though it has a lower total pore volume. These differences are small, but notice the large difference between them and the other trilayer separator. It has significantly less pore volume and porosity. Now, when comparing pore sizes, we see that the monolayer separator has the largest median and modal diameters. These differ due to the skewness of the pore volume distribution. The H16 trilayer has the smallest median and modal diameters, and the H2512 falls in the middle. As far as the pore structure parameters, the monolayer sample has the highest permeability and the H1612 trilayer has the smallest. This is to be expected with a difference seen in median and modal diameters. There's less difference in tortuosity and tortuosity factor between the three, though the monolayer separator is definitely less tortuous. I wanna thank you for attending today's webinar. Please stay tuned while we gather questions that have been posted during the webinar, at which time we will begin the question and answer portion. Thank you again for attending. We will be right back.